Lord, I say, the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise them up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. Are they doing it? transgression of the law for sin is the going against transgression of the law so the only way that you can sin is when you go against the law so in Matthew chapter 18 verse 15 when you pose to pull your brother up if he offends you right one-on-one -on -one, if you do not do that that would be a sin because that is defined as a law and you're you're transgressing that law when you don't do it you're going against it. You're not doing it. You're not pulling your brother up or your sister up when they offend you. That would mean to go against that you would be sinning. So we need to inquire about these laws that they're saying is done away with. It's not making sense. And all of these laws keeps an order. All of these laws take, gives an order in our nation and in our community. It keeps order. It keeps a clear motion under the most eye. It saves you from uh, 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 unaliving your brother or being unalive. It saves you from having misunderstandings that will cause a break in the family. Any more on that? Read it again. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. You know what I mean? Going sin, sin is the going against of the laws and commandments that the Most High gives you. And you have to find out and start inquiring about these laws that he's talking about. Because that is the main thing that causes you to sin. That's what it's all about. You wake up every Sunday and wake your kids up early in the morning and make them go to sleep early as Saturday. So they can go to church to learn about sin and how not to sin. You stress your brain talking to your children about things that they shouldn't do, how they shouldn't sin. Well, we need to find out the laws to know how we are sinning. And the Christian church has did a terrible job at it. Right. They did a terrible job. You see it on TV, in the media, TikTok, IG, a terrible job. There's no more famous pastors left than either in the alternative lifestyle community or they did some type of crime. We have to start doing this ourselves. We need to come back to the most high. These laws was the missing piece that will get us back and being a nation that is not crippled by drugs, that is not crippled by pedophilia, that is not crippled by so many of every female you meet has some type of story about being assaulted, about being the R word. It's ridiculous, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Everybody has a friend that has been unalive, that has a friend that is in prison, that has a friend that, 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 that is on drugs. Having order in your community prevents all of this. You know what I'm saying? It's the step before to prevent sin. It is needed. The law is the step to prevent sin. Knowing what it is so you won't do it. And we're going to get some more into it. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law worketh right, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Kind of one calm. Now this is saying, read it from the top again. Okay. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 15. 
because the law worketh right. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So that saying is, we understand that there's the law, not going against the law, transgression against the law is sin. So it's not too complicated, right? The Christian church makes following the law, makes, makes sin and not sinning very complicated because they took away the law, the things that you shouldn't do, right? Now, when you're walking around and you got to start uh, uh, knowing what not to do, like offending your brother. We're going to use that same example. If you haven't offended your brother, then there's no, there is no sin. That's what the scripture is saying. If you have not offended your brother, there is no sin. So if you haven't broke a law, you don't have to be fearful and scared that you're going to what they call hell, what the Christian church call hell. There is no sin. Read that from the top. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath from where, right? For where no law is, there is no transgression. It's a lot. Of if the law, when you learn these laws and you understand that <clears throat> I'm not supposed to do one thing <clears throat> and you haven't broken it, there is no going against the law. There's no need to be fearful. The church has a thing of putting a lot of fear into us as a tactic to keep us coming back to the church and spending our money. We're not giving us the definition of a sin. Because if they gave you the definition of a law, which they say don't do, you would know if I do this, if I, do, if I go against this law, I, I sin. If I don't go against this law, I'm okay. I'm good with the most high. And you wouldn't be so panicky to give your whole life savings to the church because, because you would think that you sin. You know what I mean? You just think that you living in sin. So you just trying to pay your way out of the, the life of sin that you were born into, that you just living in because you're alive. That is a tactic that pimps use. You know what I'm saying? They talk good in your ear, right? to get you to give them that money. Right. You know what I'm saying? That is what your pastor is. Your pastor is a pimp in the pulpit. Right. Right. He talks smooth words to you to get you to give him your money. He guilt trips you. He makes you feel convicted. He makes you feel like every day, 24 seven, my life is full of sin just because I'm breathing and I need to pay my way out of it. And this also adds to your poverty, black man. You know what I'm saying? Your wife is going to church emptying out her purse in a plea to the Most High to take away sin. Understanding that these laws that we follow and that we have to keep, it's a lot that we should follow and that we have to keep is the key to being under the Most High's good grace. We gonna get some more to it. And this is, and this is why we need to start asking these pastors, you know what I'm saying, about, about, about uh, 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 making them explain what they're saying because they're telling us anything. They're not giving us chances to respond back to them. They're, they're not giving, they're, they're telling us that we have to ask them questions after the service is over. After everything is done with, we get to ask them questions one-on-one. -on -one. But what about everybody else in the congregation? Right? What about everybody else in the congregation? We all speak to, we all think to, thinking the same thing. Pastors don't let you ask questions. They could, because they have no answers. That's why they're not letting you ask uh, uh, no questions. That's why you don't know. We haven't been taught anything. You know what I'm But songs, and clap, and tamarines, and good, and lyrics to songs. Gorilla comes out of the church. She, Gorilla, grew up in the church. Her parents were Christians. And the product of two Christian parents is Glorilla. That's the product. Right. So we're seeing, we're seeing what the church, Christian church makes. They had a long run. Their run has been very, very long. You know what I'm saying? Give me um, uh, uh, 1 John 5 and 3. Salah. My bad. Give me 1 John 5 and 3. That reign has been very, very long. 
You know what I'm saying? And nothing has changed. You know what I'm saying? Homelessness hasn't went down from the help of the church. It went up. Crime hasn't went down from the help of the church. It went up. And most, and when you're in the church, you know what I mean? The youth in the church are the, or most of the time, are the ones that are selling drugs outside of church. You know what I'm saying? All doing, all, all, all fornicating outside of the church. They're the ones. It does not help. You got that? Come, come. You know what I'm saying? So we need to start taking what we have seen coming out of the Christian church and we need to start challenging it. We need to order them to explain first these laws and why we shouldn't follow them. Why are they telling us that we shouldn't follow them? When you have a child and you tell him don't smoke, you explain to him why he shouldn't smoke. You give him the pros and the cons. I'm telling you this, and this is the job of a father, right? And a pastor is a father to the congregation. He's teaching them. So he should explain to them, the laws are done away with. These are why the laws are done away with, and these are the laws. And then showing you the connection of how following these laws destroy the people. But he can't do that. Like eating shrimp and crabs. And, and how many blacks and Latinos have high blood pressure? And eat pork. That's against the most high to eat pork. This is why you have all types of health issues in the black community. And, La and Latino community and Native Indian community. And we, we wonder why, what is going on. It's because you're not following the basic, fundamental, practical laws of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? That could save your life. You got that? Go ahead, read. This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not greedy. This is the love of God. This is how you know <clears throat> that you love the Most High, by you keeping His laws. So if we don't follow the laws no more, then that means you don't love God. This is this is scripture. And what is this? This is 1 John chapter 5. This is the New Testament. This is what the Christian church follows. They say they don't follow the Old Testament no more. They don't follow the laws no more. They follow the New Testament. And the New Testament is saying what again? This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. It's not grievous to not eat pork. It's not grievous to not... It, it, to not eat shrimp, to not eat lobster, to pull your brother up when you have an offense on, when, when, when y'all offend each other, when he offends you or you offend him, and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. It's not hard. It's harder, it takes more energy to go to somebody else and tell them the whole story. That takes more work. That takes more energy. That's harder. And it destroys our people, like getting high, being a drug dealer. That is a hard life. It takes a lot of energy to watch your back, to strategize on the block, to assign a watcher, to assign a hitter, right? To assign a good enough hitter, to pay him, to go meet the plug, to bring the work back to dodge the police, bringing the work back, to find a spot to hide it, a spot you can trust. That's a lot of work to make, to make sure that your money is coming back right. You know what I'm saying? The most high is against it, and it destroys our people. You know what I'm saying? That's why we missing friends, we missing cousins, we missing fathers, you know what I'm saying? We missing, we missing uncles. They're all, they're alternative. They all alternative lifestyle. Getting high, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They all alternative lifestyle. Getting high, you know what I'm saying? We think 
We think that selling drugs is going to get us out. It's only going to hurt your own nation, right? You see that police in the last couple of years unalive a black man or Hispanic man and then go get another job as a police officer in another state. And then we mad. We mad when they murder us. But then we go and then sell drugs to our own people. Right. You a murderer, Salati. You are unaliver, just as much as that police officer. Right. You you are adding to it. You know what I'm saying? And 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 in the moment, it's nothing because the benefit is for you. But this is why the other nations have patriotism, right? This is why you see them unaliving for their nation. You have to have that same love for your nation. You gotta take an extreme step of that. I am so deep and I'm in poverty, I'm down so bad. But the extreme step that I would take is I will not sell poison to my people what? to get me up. You know what I'm saying? If you think about it, right? If you think about it, it's a trick. You know what I'm saying? Now, we all go through things. We all, we all go through a poverty in life. And this is why we come out here and we talk brotherhood, right? T taking, a, eradicating and selling drugs and taking on brotherhood will fill up that empty gap of whatever you don't have. Because brotherhood, your brothers will fill up that gap. You won't have to sell drugs. You won't have to. You know what I'm saying? You won't have to, whatever you need, I have brotherhood with brothers that stand on morals that stand on business, right, right. you know what I'm saying? That are men. Like when, when I was young, and I was, and I grew up in East Baltimore, we had a term called real N-word, real, real, real dude, right? And he had a set of skills that he did. He had morals, he didn't tell, he didn't run, he didn't back down, you know what I'm saying? He, he took care of his children, you know what I'm saying? And you call him, yo, that's a real dude. That's a real dude, and we admire him, and we respected him because of his morals, right? We, ex we, we admire and respect the men, the older dudes that's on the block, because they made it out of the trap. Be that old dude that has morals. Be right. that old head dude. Yeah, Babylon is falling